Good morning on this 17th Sunday after Pentecost. I'd like to extend an invitation to the congregation that at 1 p.m. today at the AME Church, that stands for African Methodist Episcopal Church on Spring Street, which is just one block up from us, uh, there will be a anniversary celebration of their church and the founding of the AME Church in particular and in general. It starts at 1 o'clock. It features some uh, refreshments about 1 o'clock. And then I believe the play drama will be at about 1.30 or so. So the congregation is invited and welcome to share in this joy with our brothers and sisters in Christ who have participated with us in the past on many things. So I hope, if it's possible, some of you can attend today at the AME Church. Join me in the call to worship. We will sing to God and bless God's name forever and ever. We will declare God's mighty acts and celebrate God's abundant goodness. Please stand. Our opening hymn is, You, Lord, are both Lamb and Shepherd.
As believers, we acknowledge the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And that Word became the Lamb of God who was slain on the cross for the salvation of all. And through the precious blood of that Lamb, we have been redeemed. So let the redeemed say so in this service and let our praises ascend to Thee in this time of holy worship. Be pleased to receive the honor, praise, and glory. Please continue in prayer with me as we lead a time of confession. Join me in the prayer of confession. God of generosity, we find ourselves bitter when faced with your abundant grace. We believe ourselves more deserving than others. We nurse our anger and resentment at those you forgive instead of rejoicing in the abundant love you show. Forgive us when we wish your grace was scarce. Forgive the double standards we hold. Help us to know that we are in need of your grace. Help us rejoice as we all gratefully receive your mercy. We are told in the Gospel of John that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way that leads to the Father. Jesus is the truth that never becomes outdated. And Jesus is the life that will never end. For those who truly acknowledge they are sinners and truly do confess their sins and repent, in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. you may be seated and would Rook like to come down front? Abby? <laughs> you sit down here Rook, okay? Sit with mom. Or you can sit on the floor, whatever you want to do. Okay, now this is a shepherd's staff with a crook. Now the sheep sometimes, they get wandering experience. I'm okay. And they wander away. And the shepherd will just go like this, grab hold of them by the neck and pull them back in the flock. Or maybe sometimes a shepherd will see that they're starting to go astray and the shepherd just might go like this, real gently tap them to get the sheep to come back to the flock. Now sometimes some bad th animals come and try to attack a flock of sheep, like a lion or a bear. And when that happens, the shepherd uses his rod. By the way, that's off a of vacuum cleaner in case you're wondering. <laughs> So with the rod, the shepherd will fight off bears and lions. And with the staff, the shepherd will help the sheep and do good things for the sheep and protect them from the bad. Now we are sheep, and Jesus is our shepherd. And the Bible says in the Gospel of John, he's our good shepherd, and he takes care of us. And everything he does, he does out of love for us. He has the staff, and the rod to always help us and protect us. And we'll hear that in Psalm 23. It'll say, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Let's pray together. Lord, let us be comforted by the fact that you have the rod 
and you have the staff, and you always use them accordingly in the way and manner in which they're intended, so that we as your sheep are kept in your fold and we're kept loving you, the one who is our good shepherd. Dismiss our children and youth in this wonderful knowledge. They are sheep that has a loving shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord, the good shepherd. Amen. Thank you. You were really, really great, really wonderful. Remember the rod and the staff. <laughs> Yes, it can be used on anyone. <laughs> At this point in the service, let us exchange the peace of Christ with one another. Good morning. Good morning. I bet some of us were up late last night watching a special game. And this morning on Channel 10, I kept hearing over and over again, it's a good day to be a Buckeye. And then I got to thinking, going a little off script, Pastor, that it's a glorious livelihood and living to be one of the Good Shepherd's flock. I'm going to talk to you about announcements. Following the service today, please join us in the Williamsburg Room for Hospitality Hour, hosted by Margaret Stevenson. And this announcement next is bearing repeating. Today at 1 p.m. at St. Paul AME Church, located at 1103 West Spring Street 
They've invited our congregation to join them for a church anniversary celebration. The celebration will include a reenactment of the history of the church and a time for refreshments. Wednesday at noon, the prayer meeting will be held in the chapel. Bible study will meet at 3 p.m. Wednesday in room 219. If you are a visitor today, welcome. Please fill out a visitor card located in the pews and place it in the offering plate. Prayer request cards are also located in the back and are in the pews. So if you have any prayer concern, feel welcome to write them there. Please check your bulletin for any other upcoming events. Do we have any announcements from the congregation? Pray with me, please, the prayer of illumination. Our Father, open our hearts and minds by the power of the Holy Spirit, that as these scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may all hear with joy and understanding what you say to us today. And Father, help us undertake what you are calling us to do in our daily lives as followers of Jesus. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. I'm going to be reading the good news from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 16. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd, does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd, the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my For his name's sake Surely goodness and loving kindness Shall follow me all the days of my life And I will dwell in the house of the Lord Forever and ever and ever. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy Staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Preparest a table and all my cup overflowing. Surely goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. And house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. Thank you, John. Thank you, Troy. Beautiful psalm. Now, in the bulletin, you'll see the 23rd Psalm reprinted with a newer version. And I was going to read that, but I, I made a decision. I'm going to present to you the 23rd Psalm with the King James Version. So it's a familiar version to you, and you may know it. And actually, some of you know it by heart. If <laughs> If you know it and would like to, to repeat it, when I read it, you're welcome to repeat it with me. And please, no one be offended if somebody's repeating the 23rd Psalm as I read it, because it's the holy word of God. So you're welcome to sort of repeat it along with me if you know it by memory. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord. So many years ago, I had a small dog. And this small dog is called a Sheltie dog. Another name for a Sheltie dog is Minnie Collie. And once I got the dog and brought the dog home, I noticed some behaviors in the dog that I didn't fully understand. But as I began to explore the nature of the dog, I realized what was going on. For example, if I went to leave the house and I went to open the front door, as soon as I put my hand on the doorknob and cranked the door open towards me to leave the house, my dog, Nicholas, would start going around in circles and barking. <laughs> and I'd back away, and then I'd go to the door handle, and I'd go again, and he'd go, but he was quiet. Only when I went to the door to leave. Now, I didn't understand a whole lot about dogs and their instincts and what it is that God put in them to do, but this is called the herding instinct. And Shelties, along with Border Collies, make wonderful dogs to watch over flocks of sheep because they know when a sheep is starting to wander and the dog will go in circles to try to get the sheep back in the fold. And I thought about Jesus Christ as a good shepherd. And I thought about the church as sheep. And so in this message, I first of all want to talk about Jesus Christ is the shepherd of Psalm 23. Secondly, I'm going to use words to start with the letter P to tell you what the shepherd of Psalm 23 does in our lives. First, let's look at the fact that John chapter 10 clearly tells us that Jesus is the shepherd, the shepherd of Psalm 23. Jesus will say, I am the good shepherd. We are told elsewhere in Holy Scripture, as in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20, he is the great shepherd of the sheep. We are told in 1 Peter 5, 4, he is the chief shepherd of the sheep. And that the church itself is described as a sheep fold. And the one who leads the church the Lord Jesus Christ is the shepherd over the fold, charged with the responsibility of maintaining the health and well-being of the sheep. So that leads us to Psalm 23. What is it that this shepherd does? What are the responsibilities? What are the duties? First, letter I'm going, first word I'm going to give you the letter P is personal. Personal. The good shepherd Jesus is personal. We're told in the Gospel of John that the sheep know my voice. In other words, when he speaks, he speaks personally to any one of us. The shepherd knows the names of the sheep. And each sheep is a little bit unique. And only a shepherd can tell the differences among the sheep. But each person in the church is totally unique, and only Jesus Christ can tell us the differences, and only Jesus Christ can call the name of that person and speak authoritatively 
to them. Personal. And so David begins Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, David made a decision to have this personal relationship with a shepherd. And in the Old Testament, God the Lord is given the title of shepherd as well. So David will say, God the Lord is my shepherd. We have to wait till the New Testament for the revelation that Jesus Christ really is the shepherd of Psalm 23. But this shepherd is personal. This shepherd knows each member of the flock. This shepherd knows the hurts of the flock. This shepherd knows the needs. This one's a little malnourished. This one needs some water. This one needs some food. This one needs some rest. And so the shepherd is personal. But the shepherd also provides. That's your second word. The shepherd provides. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Now one thing about sheep is they will not rest until they've been nourished and satisfied. In other words, to lie down in green pastures means that the shepherd has taken perfectly good care of that particular sheep, that that sheep feels confident enough to just simply lie down in the midst of that pasture. He leads me by the still waters. The thirsting of the sheep and the knowledge that it's time for them to go to the brook and drink, the shepherd knows and the shepherd takes them so that all their needs are before his eyes and all the means to provide for them are done by him. Paul tells us in Philippians, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So in other words, the good shepherd knows what is needed in your life, what is needed in my life and he seeks to provide. Now the next word that I use starts with the letter P is the shepherd of Psalm 23 protects. The shepherd protects. And we heard it in a little bit in the children's message. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now it's mostly the, the rod I'm referring to when I talk about the protection of the sheep. There were dangers out in the pasture land. There were dangers from wild animals such as lions and bears. And David, who's the author of this scripture, literally fought a lion and a bear. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. Thou art but a youth, and he a man of war. And David said unto Saul, Now I'm adding this to the text. This is not in the text, all right? Eh. <laughs> eh. Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock, and I went after them. And I smote them and delivered him out of the mouth when he rose against me. And I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. So thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defiled the armies of the living God. He's going into his personal history, his work history. It's on his resume. I slew a bear. I slew a lion. Now, I don't know how close you've ever been to a bear, but I lived in the mountains of Virginia for five years, and there were lots of bears nearby. In fact, they used to go out and seek out bears. Uh, one of the gentlemen in the church says, yeah, we're going out looking for bear. I mean, hunting for bear. No, looking for bear. 
We're not allowed to take our rifles or our guns or anything. It's not bear season. It's bear season like twice, uh, two weeks or one week of the year. But we go out and find them. What? Yeah. We've got our dogs and we go out. They just like to go out and find a bear. So <laughs> the dogs go out and find a bear. I said, what do you do? He says, well, the dogs get the bear all worked up and the dog goes up a tree. I said, well, don't you ever worry? The bear comes down. He said, no, it's never happened. He says, but they just go out and find a bear. They don't go out and shoot a bear because it's not bear season. Now, I lived in the mountains for five years, and I talked to some folks that did that. <clears throat> I personally thought it was not a good idea, to be quite honest with you. But... So David, as a youth, will slay a lion and a bear. So David can say in Psalm 23, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort in other words, I know you're on call. I know you're watching. And if it's a lion or a bear, it'll be taken care of. Or a robber even, because there was also thieves that wanted to steal the sheep. So he protects the life of the sheep. Now the next word I give you with the letter P is prepares. Jesus said, I go and prepare a place for you in John 14. I go and prepare a place for you in my father's house. And he was referring to eternal life. Jesus, the good shepherd, prepared a place. And David, under the power of the Holy Spirit, We'll end this psalm. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In other words, the shepherd will get you through this life. The shepherd will get you through the barren land. The shepherd will get you through the famine. The shepherd will get you through when the lions and the bears come. But it's all for a reason that you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He provides, he's personal, he protects, and he prepares. There was a, a Bible society that was having a contest about Psalm 23, because Psalm 23 is so beloved and so near and dear to the hearts of so many around the whole world. And they wanted to see if somebody could have like the perfect recital of Psalm 23. And they had lots of people come for the contest and it came down to two individuals. The first individual was a great orator. And the orator spoke every word precisely with the correct diction and enunciation and pauses. And the crowd was astounded at the work of the orator. And the second individual made some goof-ups and didn't say everything perfectly and didn't pause and didn't accent words correctly like the orator. And the judges debated about who should we give the award to? And they eventually gave it to the second individual because they said, he knows Psalm 23 about the shepherd, but she knows the shepherd of Psalm 23. God is personal. And David makes sure that you understand this. And he will say, the Lord's my shepherd. I shall not want. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that Jesus is our shepherd. We acknowledge he does all those things I mentioned. He does act personally in our lives. He does protect. He does provide. And he does prepare. And we're going to ask the shepherd will shepherd the flock as said in the holy word of God. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we offer these our prayers through his holy name, the one who is the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our middle hymn is Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. to come before God in the giving of our tithes and offerings.
present these, our tithes, offerings, and gifts, and ask that you use these offerings and gifts as you use us, presenting as our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We'll see if there's any prayer request of God's people this morning. If so, please wait for David to bring you the microphone. And if you use the microphone, try to get it fairly close to your mouth so that you can be heard. Our Father and our God, we acknowledge that indeed if we are honest, we confess we are as sheep. We have wandered. You've brought us back. We have been thirsty. You satisfied our thirst. We have been hungry and you have fed us. We have been fearful. And you have chased the enemies. We thank thee that the great title that was given to God the Lord in Old Testament was shepherd. And that title was assumed by your son, the Lord Jesus. We acknowledge the church is a flock. We acknowledge the church is in need of the shepherding of the flock, who is the chief shepherd, the Lord Jesus. Hear our prayers for the needs of congregation, for those that we may know that are injured and are in need of the oil of healing to be poured upon their body, soul, or spirit. We pray, our Heavenly Father, for our nation, as it appears that it has been as a wandering sheep and needs to come back to the basics of your word to be substantiated in our land. Heavenly Father, we pray for our land, asking that your spirit will do a work in and our midst, reviving and restoring the supremacy of God's word in people's lives, the supremacy of God's word in the church, the supremacy of God's word in our institutions, that it is authoritative and it is the will of God for people. Hear our prayers for those that we know who are in need, those who are suffering. If there are any that we know who are near the point of death, we pray for them that you provide the grace that is needed. We pray for those who have lost loved ones, that the comforting presence of the Holy Spirit will come by their side and reassure them of the truth of God's word and reassure them that as David proclaimed at the end of the psalm, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hear our prayers for whatever need is being expressed right now in the hearts and lives of God's people, that all prayers will be answered in your will and in your time and to the glory of God. And we pray it all through Christ the Lord who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds.
forward from this sanctuary knowing that the great shepherd of the sheep, the chief shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, is our guardian and our guide through life. Amen.